Good morning everyone. Welcome back to Lake Branch Farms. It's another frosty cold morning here in North Carolina. It's February the 20th and while it's still too early for us to be planting on planting things like squash and zucchini, peppers, tomatoes, it's the perfect time of year for us to get another favorite vegetable ours in the ground, potatoes. Now there's a step-by-step -step process that we use to get our seed potatoes in the ground and in today's video I'm going to show you how we do that. All right guys, so right here we've got two bags of seed potatoes. And what specifically makes these guys special is that they're blue tag certified seed potatoes. And that basically just means that they have been inspected, they are certified disease free, and that they have not been washed or treated with any kind of chemical to preserve them. So this, these potatoes come straight out the ground and were put up for seed potatoes. And you can see they range in size from this you know, to a little smaller, to something like this. And a majority of these guys have already sprouted. And you can see that's a good thing. That's what we're looking for. And it's two 50 pound bags today. There's 100 pounds of seed potatoes here. And I'm gonna show you the steps that we go through and we look at each individual potato to see and make sure that we're gonna get a good viable seed potato out of that. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, well, can I just use a, a potato from the grocery store and plant that? Yeah, we've all seen potatoes that we left in the refrigerator or in the, uh, the pantry too long and they sprouted. So you could use that potato, but there's nothing saying that it's gonna grow. And if it does, there's nothing saying that it's actually going to put off tubers and make potatoes and if they're gonna be any good or not. So in my opinion, if you're gonna do this and you wanna make sure that you're getting a good seed potato, go ahead and buy a blue tax and you can buy them um, I think I've seen them at Tractor Supply in little five pound bags. I get these from the local farm supply and I mean, they're not expensive. I got maybe 60 bucks in these two bags. So you're talking $30 a bag for 50 pounds and this is gonna generate probably close to six 100 foot rows for me. Four to six 100 foot rows are what we'll get out of these two bags. All right, so we want to multiply these bags and we want to make these two 50 pound bags go a lot further and to do that, we're gonna cut these potatoes. We're gonna cut them into pieces. Now, a lot of people will just plant that whole potato and it will grow and it will make potatoes. I mean, you can harvest off of it. But I can take this potato here and I can get two plants off of this one potato. And I can take this potato here and I can get three plants off of that one potato. Whereas if I just planted that one potato, I'm gonna get one plant. So the process that we use is when we cut our seed potatoes and we divide them into pieces that we're gonna plant, we have to let the potato cure where we cut it. And that's called uh, superizing. And to superize a potato, basically you need to cut it and you need to store it. I've got a couple pieces here that's already been cut. Jace cut these yesterday. But this potato has been cut and you can see it's in two pieces. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna store that so air can get to it, basically circulate air around it. And we're gonna store it in the dark, um, in a closet. I'm gonna store it in my germination rack on the bottom, but I'm just gonna cover it with a towel. Um, a lot of people just, you know, they'll, they'll do it outside and it doesn't matter as long as it is relatively warm and out of sunlight, direct sunlight, they should sprout just fine. And what we want to look for is a piece of seed potato that has a couple of eyes on it. And I see this one here has two eyes on it and this one here has three. So those two pieces are going to be good. And you can cut them in different angles to where, you know, both sides are like, open and need to be superized and you can see this one here has it has three on it too so as long as it's got two to three eyes you should be good so basically we want to take a potato and we want to look at each individual one and get the most at, that we can out of that one potato so what i'm gonna do is cut this one in half and that's going to make two seed pieces so that's we just took one plant and made it two just by cutting it so you got eye or got sprouts here and we got several eyes on top of this one and we're just going to put it on this I'll show you guys this here in a minute, but it's a, just a bread rack is what it is. And we're gonna cut these guys. Uh, this one here, I could possibly get three pieces out of it, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna cut right down the middle and we're gonna make this into two plants. And you can see these pieces right here, this is what we're gonna plant in the dirt. And we're gonna plant it with this side down. This side here, once it's superized, it'll be like a piece of shoe leather. It'll get really tough. And what we're trying to do is to keep this from rotting. Now, if I was to put this in the ground just like it is, as moist as it is, it would probably rot. But once this heals over and scabs over, it protects this seed potato, and you can put this in the ground, and that's where it's going to sprout. 
All right, guys, one thing I did want to mention is that I have heard tell, and I've never done this, but I have heard tell of people curing their cut sea potatoes with sulfur and wood ash. Um, you hear a lot of people doing it out west. Now, I have never done that, so if you're going to try something like that, make sure you do your homework because this I know works. I've done it this way. It'll work just fine, but I don't know what the sulfur or the wood ash would actually do to help cure it. Maybe it just puts a coating on it or a film on it to keep water from trying to get to it. I don't know, but um, that is something else that you can do to superize these, but do your homework. I don't have any information on that and I can't support it because I've never done it. But if you're going to try something like that, make sure you do your homework first. All right, guys, so we'll go down here. I'm going to show you where these guys are going to be planted. You can see in that bag, I mean, it's full of potatoes. And this is the tag to come off. These came from Maine. So this is a certified seed potato from Maine. It was specifically sold for planting. And this is the racks I'm talking about. These red racks here. This is what I use to cure potato seeds on. And uh, I've got several of these. And what I'll do is I'll put these guys here and then I'll just keep stacking them up on top of one another inside my germination chamber and i'm gonna show you this y'all don't mind my messy barn i ain't had time to clean it but you can see here i'll stack them like these guys here and then i'll just basically cover them with a towel or you know a tarp or a blanket or something to just keep the light off of them so we're gonna go down here to the bottom end you guys finally get to see the bottom end of our property where we actually uh plant most of our what I call block crops, like corn and okra and stuff like that, and long rows, or squash and zucchini. Um, you y'all haven't got to see this yet, but strawberry field. This is a uh, uh, sweet Charlie. That's what those are. And these are onions. These are bubbling onions. These are sweet onions. Uh, candy and a red sweet onion called Montreal. Um, leftover collars. And I just had started doing tractor work down here to get some of these fields ready to plant. And this is where potatoes are going to go. This field block here. These are 100 foot rows and usually get six in here. I might be able to stretch it and get a little bit more. But yeah, you can see where the old mustard greens and stuff like that and some of the old turnips. Um, this has been two days since I've turned this over, but you need some warm days to actually to help start breaking this stuff down and what i'll do is come down here and just a little bit on a tractor and i'll run through this and roll it again and eventually what that's going to do is break that stuff down to the point to where the ground will just start you know digesting this this green material and breaking it down so the soil can actually the soil microbes can utilize it all right guys so we got the first rack done this is probably if I had to guess, 90 to 100 pieces of sea potato. And we know, and you've heard me talk about this in the past, but we know um, what a 100 foot row will produce for a 20 inch spacing, which 20 inches is what we do potatoes on. We do a lot of things on 20, cabbage, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, things of that nature. We do them on a 20 inch spacing, but on a potato bed, we only do, we don't do double plants. We do one plant down the middle of the row. Um, simply because these plants are gonna get massive. But we do a 20 inch spacing on these plants, meaning there's 20 inches in between each seed potato where we drop it at. So that tells us we need 60 pieces of seed potato for one 100 foot row. Now this is probably, like I said, 100, 90 to 100 pieces of seed potato and I've got more racks. So by the time we get done with this, and that's only half of one bag. So by the time we get done with this, we should have enough seed potatoes to do at least six rows. And that's what we're shooting for. And if it's not, that's no big deal. I mean, I can get more. But for right now, we're going to focus on these two bags, hoping that we get six 100-foot rows out of it. All right, so the next step in this process is we're going to get the plot ready. We're going to start composting it. We're going to start amending it. We're going to start putting chicken litter in it. We're going to start disking that in so it has time to mature and get ready to put these uh, potatoes in the ground. All right, guys, so we got all of the sea potatoes cut up and got them put away. We have, I draped a towel over top of them to kind of keep the light off of them, but here it is. We ended up with four large racks, which holds probably 100, 120 pieces. And then we ended up with five smaller racks, which hold about 30, 35, 40 pieces on it. So needless to say, we got plenty of sea potatoes. All right, guys, it is warmed up really, really nice out here right now. And I'm fixing to come out of this jacket. I'm going to get on this tractor, and I'm going to head down here, and I'm going to roll this potato plot over one more time. 
But as always, guys, we appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.